Hi everyone, um, welcome to this Dying Light Developer Tools tutorial on how to work with selectors, specifically the co-randomizer and using it to expand your prefabs with uh, a little bit of variety. So I figured I'd touch on this topic uh, over any other topics because uh, I found it to be the sort of like the most powerful most powerful thing you can do with prefabs, at least that I've I've seen so far, um, and and this is in and so far as it relates to to the work I do with uh, with the developer tools. Obviously, different people will have different needs for how they interact with the tools, um, but I found this to be to be quite useful for me in in my sort of my positioning for future projects. So hopefully, it'll be useful for some of you guys as well. So. What we're looking at right now is um, is a bus, uh, an odd looking bus. You can see that uh, there are some trees that are duplicated here and there's some ivy that's duplicated. We got a bunch of different colors in here and we've got some clipping going on. Um, and that is by design um, because I wanna sort of cover a bit of what uh, what selectors do and, and how we can utilize them. Um, so the first thing I'm gonna do is um, I'm gonna go to this, this prefab of mine, this RSV bus work copy. Um, I'm just going to save it and then I'm going to open it up again. Um, and then you can see here that what I've done is I've, I've separated my, my instances into grass, tree, and, um, and the bus, which is a mesh in and of itself. So we're not, we're not going to worry about the bus. It's going to remain as is. But what we'll do is we'll, we'll go and open the grass and we'll see here that there are three prefabs in here. One is, de uh, one is dead grass, one is green grass, and one is orange grass. So if I like... Um, Un, um, or if I uh, hide these other two, you can see here that the clipping's gone and we're focused on one type of grass. Similarly, if I was to unhide, uh, if I was to unhide the dead and the green, then we've only got green left and so on. Um, and then pretty much for the same, uh, the exact same thing with our, um, our tree over here. Uh, if, I, if I go take a look, I've got dead, green, and yellow. So if I, if I hide um, dead and yellow, you can see that we've only got a green tree left over here. So the reason these are clipping into each other uh, is important. Um, and well, let, let me get to demonstrating. So when you're working inside of a prefab, and you can do this with meshes or with other prefabs, um, generally I find other prefabs to be more useful in this scenario. But here, what you can do is you can go right click on your prefab and you can um, move down to this, this thing that says controllers and create a, a randomizer. Um, there's also switchers. Um, I've been using randomizers almost exclusively, so um, you guys can experiment as and as in when you feel. Um, so I'm going to create a randomizer, and you can see what it's done is it's moved my, my dead tree in there. And if I, if I go add these two, you can see now that the three of them are all in the randomizer group. So, and then you can see with the randomizer open, if I click on each one, it'll show each one independently, which is particularly useful if you're only interested in seeing one of the, the, the prefabs that you've dealt with. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and name these guys, something that I can, I can access easily. So I'm gonna say dead, green, and we'll do orange for consistency's sake. Um, and then I'm gonna go ahead and right click on the randomizer and say create slash update selector preset. So now it's gonna pop up with a thing that says name um, and I'm gonna call this thing vegetation type um, just because that's sort of what we're gonna be dealing with in this tutorial. But you know, this, this name should be descriptive to sort of how you're used to managing your prefab names or your, your selectors and you'll, you'll sort of become more familiar with this as you, as you play with this a bit more. So I'm gonna go ahead and say okay, and that's gonna save for me. Um, and then I'm gonna go ahead and save this guy. Um, and once that's done, you'll see what becomes available in the root of this prefab is a, is a little thing that says vegetation type. So if I, go, um, if I go dead here, it's gonna display the dead one. If I go green, it's gonna display the green one. And if I go orange, it's gonna display the orange one. And then this is, this is sort of persisted outside of the, the prefab. So if I go ahead and save the whole prefab, you can see here that, that what's there is the orange one. And if I was to go and find another one in my prefab, uh, um, prefab browser, I can pull out this bus and you can see this bus is now using the orange tree. So what I'm gonna do next is just pretty much rinse and repeat for, uh, for our grass because we wanna make sure that we're only seeing one of those at a time. So 
I'm gonna go ahead and create a randomizer and pull these two in here as well. Rename them green and orange. And then create update selector preset. And this is, ooh, <laughs> a lot going on over there. Vegetation type, steam, steam is interrupting me. Cool, okay. And um, then we go ahead and save this prefab and now we can see that this prefab has a vegetation type and this prefab has a vegetation type. So if I choose uh, green, you'll see green there. If I choose dead, you'll see dead there. If I choose orange, you'll see orange there. And then similarly, if I save this and then go to my prefabs and pull another one out, you can see that now it's saved using the orange one. And that's, that's sort of like the basics of selectors. Very straightforward, very useful if you wanna, if you wanna take uh, if you want to make a couple of prefabs that have like some basic selector stuff inside of them. Now, what, what I wanted to demonstrate more specifically today is a slightly more complex use for selectors. And that is to sort of to take what we've done here and push it out a level. So, so right now, um, you can see that at the top level of this prefab that we don't have access to these selectors. Um, and that's because the selectors are configured at this level. At the, at the level of our grass and our tree, right? So what, what we would normally do here, or the, so far, uh, and feel free to correct me in the comments or whatever if I'm wrong here, but um, so far what I've been doing is I have been, um, I've been going through to my, um, my working directory, so I'm just gonna pull across a, um, a Visual Studio Code window here. And you can see here that I've, I've got my prefabs and my presets. And if I open my prefabs and I go look for my RSV bus, you'll see that this prefab lives here and it's, it's set up over here, right? And then if I look at my grass and my tree, there, there's, some there's some stuff that's configured here with their co-randomizers and so on. So now what you could do is you could, you could try and figure out what's going on here. And, um, and then like, uh, once you figured out what's going on, you'd go ahead and, um, and copy what needs to be copied across to your, your parent prefab. Um, and then you'd configure the preset for this prefab and, and all of that fun stuff. And then once you've done that, you would be able to access, um, access the inner selectors. So the things that say, um, say the like green and, and dead and orange and stuff to select your vegetation type, you'd be able to access that inside or, or from from sort of the parent prefab level right um, but I, I um, I've moved into some slightly more complex prefabs and as you can see here I've got a I've got a big building here um, and this big building has got different variations of vegetation and different variations of windows that run along the side of the building and so on um, and when you're dealing with with sort of that that complexity of prefab um, it starts to become very cumbersome to try and manually edit those these text files, right? So to solve that particular problem, um, I actually went ahead and developed a, an application that, um, that does this. So um, I'm going to go ahead and just clear my working directory for that application so that I can have a nice fresh start. Um, but basically, what the function of this application is, is it, uh, if I bring it up over here, this thing, um, this thing is all about editing prefabs. So, um, so it, it, it was it was primarily as a little tool for me to to go ahead and, and to fiddle with these things and, and to make it easy for myself to, to do particular edits. Um, but what I also found was that um, that when when I was when I was busy with it, that it could probably be useful for other people. So that's why I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate it today. So um, the interface is pretty simple. You've got a couple of buttons, and those buttons do particular things, which I'll show in a second. Um, but the first thing we're going to start with is we're going to open a prefab, um, and thankfully it's already it's already in my directory. But if it wasn't there, then what I'd do is I'd go to my my main PC, I'd go to my Steam library, find my Steam apps look for the Dying Light 2 game, go to the dev tools, open projects, find my project, um, go into source, go into data, and then, um, and then look for my particular prefab. So in this case, we know we're dealing with the RS underscore V bus prefab, which is this one. Um, and then this thing is gonna open and give you sort of a display for this prefab. So when prefabs, or, or when, you, when, you generate, um, when you generate a selector, um, what happens is it it generates a, a dot pre file which which stands for a dot pre uh, which stands for a preset file, and this preset file sort of controls what 
what the selector looks like, right? Um, and then obviously the prefab is this is this object that you might edit via text. And if I go if I go look at the errors, you can see that this thing this thing says it can't find something that's being used or whatever. And there's a button to resolve errors. I'll get to that in a second. So first thing first thing um, that I'm going to do is I'm going to take a look at my two prefabs down here. I'm going to see okay that this this um, child prefab, the, the grass, it's, it's set up, it says selector, and that selector refers to this co-randomizer, which knows dead grass and orange, right? Or dead green and orange. Um, and then if we click over to the preset file, we'll see that this, this thing's defined vegetation type, and it says that this field is selector. And if I go look at the errors, it says, this prefab selector is still using the default name. You should consider naming this something more descriptive. Um, I've added that in for myself. This is more of a warning than an error. Um, but what I like to do is I like to go and replace selector in all the places where it's referred to with the, like a more descriptive, um, a more descriptive uh, name. So in this case, we know that the selector is actually vegetation type. So I've, I've gone ahead and done that. And then once I've made my edits in these two screens, I can go ahead and click update. And then we'll see that the errors are gone because now it knows that we're dealing with, with this more specific selector. If I pop back out to the parent, um, and then I go out to, so I was just dealing with the grass. If I go into tree, we'll see that this thing is, is dealing with the same problem, but it's also using vegetation type. So we can go in and replace vegetation type in all of the related areas and update that prefab. And then you see that all the errors are gone. So now this thing is, this thing is set and ready to go. If we go back to our parent prefab, we'll see that um, this thing is, is uh, uh, this thing is displaying some errors and it says that the selector vegetation type inside the grass prefab is missing from the current prefab and the selector vegetation type in the tree prefab is missing from the current prefab. So um, what, I, what I found to be particularly useful, and I did spend quite a bit of time on this, is I, I, I created a mechanism for auto-resolving some of these errors. So obviously not all errors can be auto-resolved, but in this particular case we can, because we have, we have some good data linking going on in these prefabs. So if I click Resolve Errors, um, what's going to have happened is this, um, this thing is going to have copied the vegetation type from the two, um, the two uh, prefabs below the tree and the grass prefabs and placed it here in our virtual fields. And you can see it's also gone and created a preset definition for this vegetation type. So now what we're gonna be seeing in the errors is that it says that this prefab selector vegetation type is used more than once. So I haven't built in the functionality to auto fix this yet but um, we can do this pretty straightforward from here. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy this across and just plug it in down here, put a comma in there, hit enter, and then just get rid of that line. Um, and then what we can do is we can remove this whole piece here. Uh, push that down a line and put that like that. Okay, so what we've done there is we've gone and pulled um, the other reference to this vegetation type selector, we've gone and pulled and placed it in here. Um, and if we update this prefab now and we go take a look at the errors, we'll see that there are none, uh, which is very useful. So now this prefab has been updated and it's ready to go. Unfortunately, um, it's, not, it's not yet going to propagate inside, inside this thing. And the reason it's not is because the, this, this application is currently running, right? So um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and save all my changes and close down the app let it close and then I'm going to come here and I'm going to click save prefab and then this thing is going to write out all the changes for me. So um, I am running my, my project inside of a GitHub um, application or inside of a, a GitHub repo. So if I, if I pull this across, you'll be able to see that I've added a couple more prefabs and that these prefabs have been updated and, and configured, including the adding the preset for the, the bus and, and all of that fun stuff. So. What I'm going to do now, now that I've finished my editing in, in our little prefab editor, is I'm going to go and open the dev tools again. Um, and I'm just going to skip past the load because we don't need to be here for that. Okay, loading is all done. Cool, so now what you'll see, now that we're back in, in, our, um, in our editor, is that this is no longer orange. Um, you see the tree switched to dead, the grass is switched to dead, and the, the vines are switched to dead. And the reason it's no longer orange is because the, the selector has come out one layer. So if you, if you look here, you'll see that there's a vegetation type setting over here. Um, and if I flick this over, um, we can now flick between the, the relevant settings. So dead, green, 
orange selectors. And I can now control this at a prefab level, which is quite cool because if I go ahead and I bring in another one of these prefabs, and I can go put it over here and then just turn this a little bit and drag it along the floor. If I go ahead and put this one next to it, I can make this one green and that one can still be orange, but it is still using the same prefab for both of them, which means that you could um, you could theoretically set up a bunch of a bunch of stuff. And you, you'll see here that I've, I've actually done this in a bunch of places. If I if I go ahead and open my level um, and take a take a crack at this building, you see that the selector plant type is, is currently looking yellow. If I switch to green, it's going to go ahead and change all the vegetation inside of that prefab to green, even the stuff inside the buildings, which is very useful. Right. It, it saves a lot of time when you're setting up prefabs or when you're trying to position prefabs in, in such a way that that things are configured properly or not, not necessarily properly, but in, in a way that you could replicate one prefab a bunch of times. Um, for example, all of these windows on this building, they're all one prefab, but they're they're controlled by selectors at a floor level inside of this building, which means that I can replicate this floor as many times as I like and I can change the windows on each on each floor to give a, a level of dynamicness of, of variety that you wouldn't otherwise get um, so yeah I think that's a, that's about it I hope that you guys found this useful um, and that you you're able to to use the tool and have fun with it um, I'm gonna be linking the the this uh, this little prefab editor application um, in the the description for this video um, I'm still going to be working on it, so I'll be dropping new versions sort of as we go along. Unfortunately, I don't have like any automated update system or anything like that set up just yet. So you, every time there's a new update, I'll post on Discord or whatever, and you guys can go download it. But please play around with it. Let me know if, uh, if you like some of the stuff, if, if some of the things are unintuitive or you don't know how to use it, or even if it's worth using at all, if you found a different way to, um, to edit the stuff inside of, inside of the, the, the Chrome editor. Um, then please also leave that in the comments and, and I can go look at that and, and feel really stupid that I spent all this time on, on a custom application. But anyway, thanks for watching. Um, I, hope this, I hope this helps you guys um, and I hope the, to see more, more custom dying light levels in the future. Cheers.